Hey everyone and welcome to another HitFilm Express tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to make this modern yet kind of stylish intro for your YouTube channel. Today's video tutorial will be rated 2 stars out of 5 on the difficulty scale. It's best if you have some basic experience with HitFilm, but I will try to explain things for a beginner level so that you understand all the way through. Also, before we begin this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Shiny Films, if you want more HitFilm and other video editing tutorials like this one, and follow me on Twitter at Shiny underscore Films if you want more constant updates than I can give here on YouTube. So before I start off this tutorial, let me give a bit of background. A while ago I asked some of my subscribers if they wanted me to create a free intro for them, and well, a lot of you guys responded, and so I'm creating an intro today for Adrian D. Adrian has a really cool channel and I just thought it would be really nice if I made an intro for him. And of course, this intro, I'm going to be doing it kind of step by step in that kind of fashion, but I want you to be able to take this and make something creative with it, do your own thing with it, and uh, really make it your own. Because in the end, it's not Adrian D's channel that you want to uh, be promoting, it's your own channel with your own intro. So with all that out of the way, let's get straight on into the tutorial. The first thing you're going to need to do, as you can see, I've got HitFilm Express open already, and I've just got a blank editor, a blank project. The first thing you're going to need to do is create a composite shot, which will, where, which will be where our intro is. So just hit New in the media panel, down here, New, Composite Shot, and you can name this whatever you want. I'm just going to start off by naming this intro, just nice and simple. I've got mine at 1080p at 29.97 frames per second, and I'm just going to hit OK. The first thing we're going to do is to create our type, our text, which will become kind of our logo. And to do this, we're just going to create a new text layer. So hit new layer, text, and you can set a custom text box size. Since I have a 1080p comp, I'm going to set my width to the width of the comp and my height to be something like five or 600, just to be safe. And now we've got our text box. You can go into the text tool up here, Click inside your text box and start typing your text to uh, create your text. And then once you're done, just highlight it all, go into the text panel down here, and you can change your font size and a whole bunch of other things. Now, while I'm changing all of this, I just want to talk to you guys about the sponsors of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning place for creatives, and it has over 17,000 classes in areas such as graphics design, filmmaking, and photography. And unlike YouTube videos, they're properly structured and high quality classes from which you can gain some real in-depth knowledge. In fact, I've watched some classes on logo design which have really helped me out when figuring out my own branding and my logo. I'll leave a link to a couple of classes that I can recommend to you guys in the description below. Pricing is also pretty great, an annual subscription costs under $10 a month. It gets even better because Skillshare have given you guys a link to use which will give you two months of Skillshare for 99 cents which is really great value. I mean, it's like less than a cup of coffee. So I'd highly recommend you guys check out the link in the description and start watching some classes. Once again, thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Anyway, let's get back on into the text. As you can see, I've got my Adrian font here in white text. The font I've used is called Black Sword, which is a really nice cursive font I found on defont.com. It's a free website where you can get free fonts. Uh, and I also recommend Google Fonts, but defont.com is better for this kind of cursive fancy stuff. Anyway, don't feel restricted. You can use any kind of font and make sure that you make this intro your own, like I said at the beginning. Anyway, we're just going to select our text now and center it in the paragraph alignment. And if we go back to our selection tool here, we'll notice that the center is not actually in the center of the text. So I'm just going to go into the controls over here, into the transform, and I'm just going to adjust the Y anchor point so that it's around the center there. And then I'm just going to adjust the position so it's on the left just a little bit so it'll work better with our intro when we add our next text layer, which is our D. So I'm just going to quickly add a new text layer. Okay, now I've got my D, I'm just going to drag this layer below the uh, Adrian layer and I'm just going to move it into position like so. Next thing we're going to do is add some radio waves. Radio waves is an effect that I'd recommend you actually play around with. It can be really useful in whatever kind of intro or a lot of different work that you're doing because it creates this uh, pattern which works really well. Anyway, I won't talk any longer, I'm just going to add a new layer, a new plane layer, and I'm just going to make it black. I'll just call this radio waves, like so. And this is just a black solid. I'm just going to drag this below everything, and in the effects panel, just add the radio waves effect. 
as you can see it makes everything transparent and then slowly we get this pentagon uh, of radio waves coming from the middle like so. I'm going to edit this to the way I like but of course you can do a whole ton of things with this effect. There are whole great uh, patterns like this. Uh, all of these preset ones are pretty cool. And of course, um, I'm just going to manually change the shape uh, like so in here. So I'll adjust my radio waves and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've basically finished adjusting the radio waves and this is what they've looked like. I've made them all rotate from this center. I've made them the same color as here. I've made them all uh, the same frequency and expansion just to uh, make sure I get the right number and the right speed of them. And I've made the blend mode normal just so I get a black background to see what's going on. So the next step for me now is I only want the radio waves to be in this certain area here. And we can't actually mask the radio waves layer. And the reason for that is because uh, the radio waves effect works a little bit differently and draws a little bit differently on to most effects. And so we're going to have to do this in a bit of a different way. But it's pretty easy to do. Just hit new layer, plane. I'm just going to create another plane. I'm just going to call this cover. And I'm just going to drag this below the D. And I'm just going to grab the mask. Hide the layer so I can see where the radio waves are. And I'm just going to drag my mask like so. And I'm just going to show the layer again. And now I just want to hit this little button called invert mask here. And that'll invert the mask for us. And now the radio waves will only appear in this little section. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out so far. The next step is to create some animations so that it all works together a little bit better. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the Adrian text. I'm going to keyframe its opacity so that it kind of blinks in. And this is pretty easy to do. I'm just going to hit the circle next to opacity and that will create a keyframe for us on that first frame. And the opacity here will be 100%. If we just zoom into the timeline, we'll be able to see things frame by frame. I'll just hit the full stop key on my keyboard or the period key and I'm just going to drag the opacity down now to 0% and now it will be completely invisible. Go from Adrian to no Adrian and I'm just going to copy these keyframes, select them and hit control C and then paste them, control V, paste them, control V, paste them, control V until I've got something like this and then on the last frame I'll just go back to 100%. And as you can see, it kind of blinks in like so. And that's how it enters the frame. So that looks pretty good. Now it's time to do the D. The D is going to be a little bit different. The first thing I want to do is adjust the anchor point because I want it to scale into position from a certain place in the D. I want it to scale in from the corner here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the transform over here and in the anchor point, I'm just going to adjust the anchor point so that the center is right on that corner, like so. And now I'm just going to move it back down into the position that it was before. Okay, now that we've got our anchor point in place, I'm just going to go to the one second mark in here. And here I'm just going to set a keyframe for the scale and also the rotation. And I'm just going to go now to the first, uh, first frame very first second, and I want the scale to be zero. Now you can see that it'll slowly scale up like so. Now, I also want to keyframe the rotation a little bit because I want it to rotate this way a little bit as well. So I'm just going to go to the beginning and set, say, minus 45 degrees. That way it'll slowly start scaling in like that. And to just smooth out this animation here, I'm just going to go back and select all of these keyframes and then just hit this manual bezier option and uh, that'll convert them to manual bezier and it'll just make the whole thing a little bit smoother. Okay, you've got all your elements introduced pretty nicely. I'm just going to quickly animate them out in a similar way. I'm just going to hit this little cog down here. I'll just redo that again for you guys. This little cog down here, composite shot properties. I'll just set the duration of the comp to five seconds. That way it's just easier if I have the whole comp is just the length of the intro that I want. And I'm just going to copy these keyframes and at exactly four seconds, paste them and then grab these and paste them at the end here. And then it'll do basically the same thing out. And the Adrian uh, opacity keyframes, I'll just do the same thing here as well. I'll just paste them and I'll just move them into position. And now it'll slowly blink out. 
the radio waves I'm going to be doing a little bit differently. I'm going to, in a similar way, create a mask like I did for the cover plane, but I'm just going to make another plane just so that it's a little bit easier on myself. I'll call this cover out. This is just a black plane as well. And I'm just going to create a square mask like so. I can hold the shift key down if I want it to be a perfect square. And then in the mask properties, in the transform, I'm just going to set the uh, rotation to be 45 degrees. So it's kind of like that. And now I'm just going to move this cover plane uh, in the position here where I want it to start covering everything. I'm just going to hide all of these layers above, except for the first cover plane. And the cover out, I'm just going to drag on top here. I'm going to go to the point in the uh, timeline where I want it to start animating out. I'm just going to have a look at what all of this other stuff is doing. So at around the four second mark when the D goes out of the frame as well, I'm just going to start keyframing this. So I'm just going to hide those two layers again, and I'm just going to keyframe the position. And at the end, I'm just going to move it all the way to the end, and I'm just going to drag it so it covers everything like so. And now we can see the black plane kind of moving across the radio waves. And as you can see at the end here, it doesn't actually cover the whole thing. So an easy fix is I'm just going to scale it up to 200%, and that should work just fine. So that's the basics pretty much done. I could add a couple other elements if I wanted to, uh, but what I'm going to do right now is you can see how the radio waves uh, are kind of smoothed out like so. I'm just going to duplicate uh, the radio waves plane layer, and in the top one I'm just going to set the blend mode to be none, just to make sure it shows through properly. And I'm just going to duplicate it a couple of times, just to make sure we get that nice thick line. And now I'm just going to show you how you can put this into your own video as a transparent intro. I'm just going to drag the whole comp in, like so, and then just in the effects panel search up for luminance key. And now just drag that on. Make sure in the controls tab you select key out darker, and you bring the threshold down enough so that most of your video layers or most of your colors show through. Just get rid of the blacks. You can also, if you want, blur out your background layer. So I'm just going to grab the blur effect, drag it onto my background layer, and I'm just going to keyframe the blur so that it slowly starts off uh, at zero and then slowly comes into one. And then I'm just going to, uh, sorry, not one, a little bit more than one, I think. 27 will do. I'll just uh, come back here and copy these keyframes and paste them as well. And now when we go through it all, you can see that the intro comes up, the background blurs, and it goes back to the normal video footage. Anyway, I hope this video helped you everyone. If it did, then be sure to like the video if you want more videos like this one. And of course, subscribe if you want more tutorials like this one. I'll see you in the next video. Stay shiny.